Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Fiji Studio, and today I'm going to share with you three simple text animation to do in DaVinci Resolve using the follower modifier. So if you're ready, let's check it out. Alright, so in DaVinci Resolve now on the edit page and I'm going to share with you how to recreate some of the Clean Motion 2.0 title available in all free stuff packs. So you can download that by clicking the link in the description below. Just enter your email and you will get this zip file. Just double click on it to unzip it. You will have a couple of things in that folder. You have the license instruction, the DRFX file and the font. Please make sure to install all the font provided. Otherwise, the titles will not work. Just select everything, double click on it to install them and then you can just double click on the TRFX file, it will prompt open this window, click install, and you're good to go. Now let's move on on how to create some of those titles. So I'm going to start by bringing a new Fusion composition in my timeline, and then we're going to move over to Fusion. Once in Fusion, I'm going to bring a background, I'm going to link the output of that background to the media out, and then I'm going to bring a new text node and link the output of that text node to the background one. Now I'm going to select text one and I'm going to write some things like, for example, bounce, because we're going to be creating a bounce animation right now. So I'm going to go and change the font for popping. We're going to raise the overall size and then I'm going to right click on the text and I'm going to click follow. You prompt open that modifier window that's going to allow us to make some animation on each letter one by one. Here, the first thing I want to do is change the delay from zero to two. That's just going to be the delay of animation between each letter. Then we're going to go over to shading and I'm going to go to frame five and I'm going to drop a keyframe here on the opacity at one. And then I'm just going to scroll down and we're going to go over to position and I'm going to drop a keyframe here on the offset. You create a new window here, path one. We don't care about it. Let's just go back to follower. And then here, we're just going to go to frame zero and we're going to change the value of the y offset to minus 0.3 and then we're just going to go back to opacity still at frame zero and we're going to bring the opacity down to zero enough played as you can see we have all first animation but it's not a bouncing yet so to do that we're going to go to the spline editor and we're going to make some modification to our curve so here i'm going to select my text one and i'm going to select only the offset displacement curve here I'm gonna select zoom to fit so we can see the point that we've dropped. I'm gonna just scroll forward and I'm gonna drop a second keyframe here on frame number eight. Then I'm gonna click zoom to fit so we can see all those points. I'm gonna select all of them and I'm gonna hit shift S on my keyboard to smooth out those curve. And here we're just gonna take this handle and reverse it. That's what's gonna create our bones animation. As you can see now the curve is just overshooting and then reducing and coming back to normal. That's what's going to create that bounce animation. Now if we play it, it's not super clean yet and we cannot see too much that bouncing animation. So we're just going to change that by clicking zoom to fit once more, making sure that we have all the points selected. We're going to hit the letter T on our keyboard to bring the ease in and ease out and we're going to bring the ease in to 100. Now, as you can see, it has modified our curve quite a lot, and uh, that overshooting is very, very pronounced. So, that's just gonna have for result to alter quite a lot of text. And in my opinion, I prefer that for a bounce animation, like so. Now we can adjust the delay between each letter. If we want to have something that is just done quicker or that takes longer, we can just always go back to the modifier, go to timing. And then here, if we want to have less delay, we can reduce that delay to one, for example, and it will just be quicker and snappier. Or we could just extend that delay to something like five seconds and we will have a lot more delay between each letter. Also, you can change the delay type. Right now, by default, we're going from left to right, but you could switch that for right to left instead. You could change that for inside out, outside in, random but one by one, or completely random. And that's it, that's how to create a bouncing text letter by letter. Now let's move on to the second one. Now for the second one, I'm just gonna start fresh. So here I'm just gonna remove the keyframe on the text node and it will just completely remove that modifier follower that we added. Here I'm just gonna change the text for something like creative. And then I'm just gonna right click here on text and again, select follower, go to the modifier window. Here we're gonna do the same thing and add some delay, but this one we're just gonna go with one 
because we want something that is a bit snappier. Then we're going to go over to shading. And then here we're going to go to frame five and we're going to drop all keyframes. So here we're going to do the same thing with the opacity at one. Then we're going to scroll down. Again, here we're going to open position and we're going to add some keyframe on the offset Y once more. So here I'm going to drop my first keyframe. Then I'm going to go back to the follower, just scroll down. And then here I'm going to go to shear and I'm going to drop a keyframe on the shear X value. Then we're going to go to frame zero and we're going to drag the X down to minus one. And then we're going to just scroll up. And here with the offset, we're going to do 0.3. And then here the opacity, we're just going to drag that to zero. Now for plate, as you can see, we have a beginning of animation. We still need to smooth that out. And here I want just to add like a zoom out quickly on the text. So I'm going to select the text one. And this time I'm going to be in the tool tab, not the modifier tab, because I wanted to add some animation on the entire text. So I'm going to go over to text. And then here I'm going to go around when the text is almost fully on screen. So here there's going to be around frame 10. I'm going to drop a keyframe here on the size. I'm going to go to frame 15 and here I'm going to reduce the size by a little bit like so. Now let's go over to the spline editor to adjust this animation. I'm going to click zoom to fit. Here I'm going to select the shear and the displacement and the size because that's the three value that I want to smooth out. I'm going to click zoom to fit. Then here I'm going to select all my point. I'm going to hit shift S on my keyboard. And then here we're going to adjust the ease in. So if you don't have that bar yet, just hit the letter T on your keyboard to bring that in. And then you can increase that to 100. And now let's play it. And that's pretty much it. That's how to create the second text animation. And now let's move on to the third one. For the third one, again, we're going to reset here the modifier. So I'm going to just click that keyframe here to remove the modifier tab. But we're going to keep that last size animation that we made here on the size going from frame 10 to frame 15. Now I'm just going to go over to text, right click, follower, go to the modifier tab. Again, here I'm going to put the delay at two. Then we're going to go over to shading going to go to frame five here we're going to drop a keyframe on opacity at one then we're going to just scroll down go to softness and drop a keyframe on the x and y value at zero and then we're going to go to frame zero and bring the y value to the max bring the x value to the max and then we're going to go to opacity and drag that down to zero then here I'm going to go over to timing I'm going to switch the order from automatic to random but one by one now if we play it, I think it's pretty good. Just I would like to readjust a bit the timing here of the zoom on the text. So maybe we're just gonna move it from frame uh, 13 to frame 18 or something like that. So I'm gonna go over here, click zoom to fit. Then here I'm just gonna untick everything in the style text follower one, and I'm gonna tick the box in size. I'm gonna click zoom to fit again to bring that to my screen, select my point, Old shift on my keyboard and then just drag that to frame 13 or 14. And we've just essentially slide over that animation full frame forward. And that's pretty much it. That's our third text animation. Hope this video was helpful. Again, you can download a bunch of different text presets like those one by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.